What it do, y'all? It's your boy, Franchise Jerry. And the best Japanese garments. Think I need a Fiji water. And you're now tuned in to WWX, Wrestling, Wrestling with, with Exotics. Exotics. Let's get it. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. What did you think about the segment between the Usos and uh, Sami Zayn? I want to say to you real quick, I don't like how they keep mentioning how there's no cracks in the bloodline. That's only telling me that there's cracks. cracks. <laughs> that I haven't seen yet. Yeah, and I don't like the sound of that. Personally, I'm nervous because, as we mentioned before, this is not Sammy. They should not turn on them. They shouldn't turn on him because they're doing wonders for each other's career. Mm -hmm. he, a lot of people were saying that storyline of the bloodline was just getting boring. And when Sammy came in, was at the perfect time. He spiced it up. And I even see it playing out like this, but it's played out so well. And just the acknowledgement that it's like character development to the fullest degree that him and Jay of all people have to do in the handshake now. Yeah. I love that uh, they're all doing the handshake now. That shit is stupid. <laughs> Yeet. Yeet. It's Look around. Tear my arm up. Bro, it's just crazy because now it's like, to imagine that, bro. This nigga Jay whole time been learning that shit, but acting like he ain't like he going to do it, Sam. He couldn't wait to bust that shit couldn't out, bro. Wait to. <laughs> <laughs> he felt so good. But it's like, it's like those are the reward, rewarding moments of watching, keeping up with the storyline. Like, see the growth in the characters and it all pay off. You know what I'm saying? But we want to see them move forward in a better fashion. Like, I don't want to see them have to break apart. They didn't really. Like, see how I was saying this Uso solidifies themselves by winning against New Day. So, like, they got their own little thing. They could say they were doing water helping Roman win. That's what Sammy needs to do to solidify himself. Like, Solo could do it too, but so it's not, it's not as a rush because you're an enforcer, bro. So, you really just did to make everybody else look good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's like, it's kind of like when Christian K used to have Tom Cole around. Like, when <laughs> Tom Cole get like the tag team title, the tag, if Christian need a partner, but the nigga, he going for that intercontinental stand there and make sure that nigga leaves. <laughs> no cap. <coughs> so yeah, for y'all don't that don't know, they had a little brief segment and they was all basically just assuring each other that they're all on the same page. And Kevin Owens interrupted and was basically saying like how he don't want to be Sammy's friend or wrestle with him no more and just saying a bunch of pointless ass shit. And he also threw in there how he used to backstab Sammy. So I'm all like, bro, you're just contradicting everything you're saying. So I'm like thinking the whole time, like, what's the point of you even speaking about that, bro? Like, and why are you hating so tough on Sammy when, like you said, you used to backstab him all the time? So don't be hating on him when you see Sammy thriving with his new fam. You feel me? So anyway, that led to a match. And you guys know who won. Obviously, Kevin Owens won. And honestly... No I'll say this, bro. If Jay wasn't in a tag team or just with the bloodline, period, he would be exposed as an aging wrestler. Like, because I'm telling you, he ain't got no finishing moves. Like, you can't finish a nigga off in 2023 with a frog splash. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think, I think the Usos in general, they need a focus on getting a new finishing move because having the 1D, cool, whatever, but you guys need individually, like, your own new finishing move. That nigga is just finished. <laughs> the 1D is only cool because it has history of Team 3D, and I know it's an effective finisher, so it's credible. Yeah. So, like, it's a cheat code because it can be, like, how are you going to kick out of this team that's won 30 championships? Have have numerous people lose to this shit. So yeah. how are you gonna hate on it? And you know what? Like Jay tried to Jay tried to super kick his way through Kevin Owens, and that's what I mean, bro. Like you don't have no real bag. You thinking that you're about to do frog splashes and super? Kicks imagine if we saw Kevin Jay, Owens. Imagine if we saw main event Jay Uso hit a sling blade. Remember when yeah. Seth first bust that move out? That was like they didn't even have a name for that shit. They was, or no. No, nah, remember, remember no, remember, no, it wasn't even him. You know who I'm gonna give this I'm glad we use a black owned podcast and we could give credit where it's due. JTG was the first nigga to do the sling blade, no, and that was his geez. finisher. And that's his finisher. And it wasn't called no sling blade. I forgot what it was called, but he is the first person I ever seen do that move. And he used to be like, ah, ah, and then he just hit you with that shit. 
when he had that feud with Shad, that's when that shit, I realized that was his finish because then he went single and then he started he started whooping niggas' ass and he hit Shad with that shit a couple times. Well, yeah, bro. Overall, it was a decent segment. I do, I do want to touch on this thing about Sammy <laughs> Owens. Like, the whole time he came out there when he talked about Sammy, like, all the stuff he touched on talking about back to him, he's like, I just kept it in my head, like, sorry, I lied to you, Martin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he wanted, like, he was trying to get that type of, like, remorse from Sammy. Like, he wanted Sammy to just be like, sorry, I lied to you, Kevin. I just, I just want to be friends with you again. The bloodline never rode up and down on the fucking road. Who gives a fuck about that? You pop up this thing into the hardest part of the fucking ring apron. The moment he won, yeah. the moment he had the biggest moment of his career at that time, even if that is, they want to say, you know, it's written and shit like that, you were like, okay, I have no problem shitting on his parade. Bro, he's tried to put Sammy on the shelf so many different times. Bro, and I, you know one thing I didn't like what WWE did? They never made, like, when Sammy was younger, and you know how he had a legendary NXT-like career, and he's a legend off of that alone? So, like, that's why they kind of have a Sammy like the way they do now. I didn't like that when he got to the main roster, just because he got injured. They when he got back in full swing, they kind of like had him build momentum, but started stop. Like I was watching the bat in twenty sixteen. He he beat was being KO right on the main roster, but then he's losing to fucking Chris Jericho, and I'm like, that'd have been a perfect chance for you to stamp Sammy. He could have won the Intercontinental Championships at Class of the uh, Champions two thousand sixteen when he faced Chris Jericho in a non title match. So I was just like, I don't see why they didn't pull the trigger then. On stuff like that, because little stuff like that, I could see how it affected Sammy overall. It was very hard for him to get momentum. He didn't start winning the single championships and went until like 2018, 2019, mm-hmm. or even 2020, bro. Because that Intercontinental Championship run, the initial one, I didn't even think he'd get that. I was surprised. And I, and I don't think they ever gave him a championship on the main roster as a face. And now we want to talk about Mia Yim versus Rhea Ripley. You know, I thought it was a pretty good match, but I obviously knew that it wasn't going to be a one-on-one for much longer. Due to the interference of the Judgment Day and the OC, it led to an eight-man tag featuring both of these women. And honestly, that match was pretty cool. Um, there was, some, like, some decent spots or whatever in it, you know. Like, of course, Dom did his little foolishness trying to get in there to involve. Like I said, we've been, if you've been watching this, you know that we've been ragging on Dom. Like, and he's slowly getting better, but at the same time, he's so far behind everybody else that it's too noticeable that he's getting better on Monday Night Raw. And he and I don't think he really understands that he's on the flagship show doing this. And he should be like, Ray didn't even get debuted on it. But anyway, um, Aria, I believe she got the pin, right? Yes. Yes, but it wasn't it wasn't the ending how I thought it should be, especially with Mia. I've noticed that Mia Yim really gives her a... Uh, a fight that she hasn't had recently. So yeah. I didn't feel like it was right for her to go down like that. What do you think? Um, Honestly, bro, I thought the match had a lame-ass ending. I knew it was going to come down to Rhea Ripley and Mia Yim. Um, I just, overall, I just wanted to see them fight. You know what I mean? I didn't want to see the eight-man tag. But I will say... My biggest takeaway from the match was AJ Styles looked like he was ready to be a champ again. You know what I mean? He was I wrestling at that I level. I definitely think he needs a three time, not just two. He needs a three. Oh, yeah, for sure, bro. He's looking like he's ready to go for another title run, and uh, I hope that he keeps the same energy. And I'm for the happy rest to of see. 2023, I hope he's just all his shit. Yeah, bro, because I can see AJ Styles being a champion in 2023. Yeah, he's he's definitely one of the... Will it be a WWE championship? Hopefully, and that'll only come if they split them titles back up. And and you know what's crazy? I really hope they do. It's crazy that AJ is a two-time WWE champion. He's never held a Universal. They want us to think the Universal is so cool, but... It's really not, not. bro. It's, it's like, not. we just look at that. that no. That's a brand title. If they had the big gold still, oh this... My, that if was they still fire. had this... It's the best. Oh, yeah, then it's Wouldn't just... would AJ a, look so cool with that? Yes, this is just as equivalent to the actual WWE <laughs> Championship. <laughs> but the Universal Championship, it's like, uh, you're just... Yeah, the Universal Championship, 2007 Championship. You're that's, not the, that you're title's not the face. Cursed. You're not the face that runs the place, but you're like number two. You that title just screams number two. Like this is either one or one. 
and the WWE titles bro, one like, or one. So like, so that's why they're they so great. That shit on us, bro. Like they, it's this universe shit. Remember when they stopped calling the fan? Oh, the WWE fan. Oh, the, when they started saying universe, now the universal champion. Like, it's a terrible idea, but. Yeah, that's a terrible idea, bro. I hate it when they started calling it that. I was like, the universe, why? No, don't, no. And then I hate it when they changed the logo. When they changed the logo, that's bro. when I just was like, this I was shit mad was, because, you know, I was okay with that logo it. being the WWE Network logo. Like, oh, that's a network type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I didn't, but I should have knew that we we're going to go with trying to make that shit regular because why would you put that as the uh, logo of the network? Well, I was seeing, you know, uh, you go on YouTube and be looking at WWE shit for a, a minute, and you'll fuck around and come across some Illuminati shit. They were saying that shit is like the way it's set up. It's like some Illuminati shit. Yeah, y'all can go and look at that shit for yourself <laughs> and go see the conspiracy <laughs> theory and shit. But uh, I don't know. I don't want to believe it. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we we pro WWE. We believe you're. God fearing company now. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Under Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. At this point in the show, we're gonna start addressing what's going on in the AEW world. Uh Dynamite this week, this past Wednesday. It started off with John Moxie coming out, addressing the crowd. Hangman followed suit by coming in, in John's face because he was brought up by John and Hangman had to let him know what's up. Personally, I'm an Adam Hangman page fan. He's not, but I feel like Hangman is underrated, and he's and uh, he's very highly valued. But at the same time, Tony Khan didn't use him the perk way as the world champ because he had all those title defenses, and he never was a try hard champion. But this feud with John Moxley that's about to go on, I think he's about to prove that because he has the toughness, the ability, and the move set. He always talking about Hangman hey, don't have a move set, but I, I can honestly tell you that's not true because every time he can chain wrestle if he needs to, he can fly around. He's a, and he's way more coordinated than John Moxley because you can't tell me you don't watch him throw some. I throw you don't watch John Moxley throw some punches and you're like, all right, come on, John, calm it down, focus. Man, Hangman don't want none of John Moxley, and you know that it's the card I eat. That's <laughs> all I got to say about that, bro. Hangman Adam Page, you can't lace John Moxley's boots. That's bad. And he's about to show you when he whoop on you, boy. <laughs> That's capital. Hey, but that shit was crazy when uh, John was running out the hangman and he fell off the stage, bro. Bro, he is. I thought he fucked around. Bro, and he is fucked not himself coordinated, up. bro. He be fucking himself up and he be fucking up certain little spots and shit. That's why I'm just like, nah. But I just personally think that hangman's going to whoop his ass and it's going to be another proven factor. So the first match on the card was Daniel Bryanson versus Dax Hardwood. Um, I thought it was a really good wrestling match. Like it was a good way to start it off because like Daniel can make anyone look like a star, and Dax is a hard hitter, so it's always something like interesting to see. What do you think about the match, bro? I didn't expect the match to be as competitive. Uh, they was really throwing them bitches at each other, so it was cool to see that. But in the end, Porky tapped out as I expected him to. And BD got the win. So shout out to Brian Danielson, bro. Moving right along to the next match, it was the TNT Open Challenge with some Samoa Joe versus AR Fox. Uh, personally, I don't really know some um, AR Fox that well, but I know Samoa Joe extensively. He's been wrestling like damn near 20 years. I've been watching him. But I want to say, what is it, like at least 13? Because he's been on TNA. He was yeah. even a ring, former Ring of Honor before this new rebranding of it, and he's a legendary uh, wrestler. Like I feel like WWE mishandled him, and I think he's going to bring great prominence to the TNT title. And I think that with with him holding the belt, it will mean more. Yeah, man, I'm glad to see Samoa Joe competing every week, and not only that, but have two belts, bro. Not one, but two belts. So. Shout out to Samoa Joe for still competing at a high level again. And uh, I love to see it. And like you said, man, WWE, they did drop the ball on him. I hope when he does come back to WWE, he's trying to be WWE champion. And they actually give him that light to be. Because if there's anybody that could take out Roman right now, it's him. <laughs> for sure. 
But I think Samoa Joe's going to have his hands full when he has to go against Warlow, though. I will say that. Yeah, it looked like he was a little nervous. I ain't going to cap, but Samoa Joe's going to put him to bed. Yeah, I don't know how that will play out. Warlow, he kind of had a lackluster run. I don't know if they'll give it back to you, but at least you can say you're TNT champion. Yes, sir. The next segment was William Regal introducing MJF and the new AEW championship belt. What do you think about the belt, bro? You're fire, son. I know you was fucking with that shit, son. I ain't going to cap, bro. That bitch sweet as hell. That but shit fire, bro. It's on a pussy ass nigga, so. Nah, he's nah, I mean, he tight as hell coming up with that. Bro, you, ain't nobody probably ever thought about doing a title like AEW World Championship like that. So he first going to be doing it. It's like it's outside the box, but it's really not because he's still like that's MDF be thinking outside, but he don't just do shit like everybody else. And that shit is cool. Uh, I'm interested to see how he's gonna defend it. And Lenny, bro, he was calling like how I said how he's gonna be defending this shit. I said like it's gonna be the title, title reign he would have. Mm-hmm. He literally called word for word, bar for bar, stole the whole flow. Said this title is gonna be whole. This gonna be title is gonna be defended rarely. You're barely gonna see me wrestle. Everything that I already expected. That's how they AEW gonna separate themselves because that's make he like I said he's an attraction. People want to come and see where MDF. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Even when I went to go double or nothing, this is before he there was a holdout. Just that hurry, just those fans hearing that he wasn't gonna be at the pay per view. Then for him to start the review off how he did because bro, you could catch it after all this going out, you could see that. The fans were like, wow, like he's not going to be there. Tony's like, I got to pay this man. And, yeah. had, and we had to know that this was going to come. So I don't see anybody beating him. I like that he came out here and addressed everybody, clowned everybody, let them know where they really stand in this shit now. Because I know they ever thought it was going to happen. And now they already seen first appearance, new title. Shit has just begun. Then he not... And then when he did it, what he what he do to top it all off, bro? <laughs> bro, he said exactly what I said. Bro, he came out there and dissed Eddie Kingston. <laughs> I don't know why MJF took the time out to diss Eddie Kingston. He had me dead. He said Eddie Kingston will never be world heavyweight champion ever. And I literally told y'all that a few shows ago. I said, if you're an Eddie Kingston fan, you're probably built like Eddie Kingston. But, yeah, man, I hope in the long run, Brian Danielson takes that belt off him. And if not that, come on back to WWE, man. But, yeah, MJF came out and said a bunch of bullshit. He couldn't lace Hulk Hogan's boots or JBL's or Jeff Jarrett's. And I can't wait to see him lose that belt because that shit is too fly for his pussy ass. Nah, it's not happening. Yeah. Triple B stays with him. So the main event on Dynamite this week was the Death Triangle versus the Elite in the best of seven series. This happened to be match three. And the Elite has already lost two back-to-back already. Death Triangle's been having a stronghold on them. Pac's been trying to influence the Lucha Bros, using the hammer. He's, got, he's gotten to, to use the hammer. He's gotten each one of them to use the hammer twice. So And he hasn't even he done it yet to win. So I can't wait to see in which match he'll do that. But this match overall was great. And I think it was like a really a must win for the elite. So it was like the winner was like obviously like they had to win. Cause I would have been surprised. What do you think about it? Man, this was another hard hitting matchup. Even though my boys didn't get the win, this was another great match that they had with the elite. Congratulations to the elite, but y'all not about to beat Death Triangle in this series. I promise you that. I don't think so. And I think this is just another stamp on the Put the death triangle over because I feel like if they were to beat the triangle, it kind of takes some credibility away from the trio saddle. Seeing as how you guys are the EVPs and you're coming fresh off the of suspension, so I'm loving how you guys played it out with this. Because if you were to just be into this match and you would have won the first match regardless, I would have been like, Yeah, that's cool and all, but that's kind of unrealistic. So, first time back, you guys just keep winning, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, but Kenny Omega, man, you look in, in good shape, bro. He's out here putting on some real wrestling clinics. You know what I mean? He kind of reminds me of Triple H, like, or what Triple H could be if he was able to stay in shape. You know what I mean? Which would have been cool to see. 
Imagine that, bro. Kenny Omega versus Triple H. Prime Triple H. That'd be a good ass match. <laughs> I don't know who the to... <coughs> actually well, Triple H would make you bury him. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. He's like Kenny. Come on now. From the game. You not gonna lay down for me? Yeah. <laughs> you not gonna take the L? Come not... on. It's I'm the, the game. game. <laughs> lay down for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So next we're gonna be talking about NXT. They're currently looking for competitors to be in the Iron Survivor Challenge. And uh, you guys can be looking forward to seeing that uh, these next couple weeks every Tuesday. Me, personally, I'd like to see my boy Grayson Waller in there. How about you, bro? I'd like to see Carmelo Hayes. Cause, you know, he's a big name on NXT. He's definitely selling pretty passing seats. You know what I mean? So I, I look forward to watching his matches. You know, I'm not the big NXT fan. But if I'm telling you I look forward to watching somebody, they... Doing something right, so I say him. Shout out Carmelo. Um, in other news, Mandy Rose, she's just hit her 400 day mark as NXT Women's Champion. She's currently 402 days in. Shout out Mandy Rose, keep it going. Yeah, she's one of the best in it doing it right now. You have to give her her flowers because uh, she was somebody who I gave up on, and you were always trying to tell me that you still believe she could do good. And his NXT career, um, NXT run in her career has been actually very beneficial. You know, like I can't say that it, it was it looked like it was a downgrade because if anything, she looks like a better superstar than she's ever had. Yeah, and uh, right before they sent her to NXT, everyone was saying how she couldn't wrestle. She was just there to model, and she wasn't actually trying to be a real wrestler. So I was happy that she went to NXT and proved herself and. Not only that, but she's been sitting at the top of the mountain for 400 days. So, again, shout out Mandy Rose. Yeah, she's definitely doing a big work. Definitely. Speaking of champions, Braun Breaker will be going again to Paul Cruz defending his NXT championship. Personally, I see Braun Breaker winning this, obviously, because he's an up-and-coming star. But they've been building like a goat boy, someone of that stature. And Paul Cruz is like, he's somebody they've, Gone back to the map like a couple times on, like going back to square one all over again just because he can't get over with the crowd. And I don't know about you, but once he started having to switch gimmicks all the time, barely only seeing him, his moveset is he's very athletic, but why is someone so athletic his moveset doesn't involve him standing off the top rope and only doing a splash? Or when he spins or when he spins somebody a, a backwards moonsault. Yeah, man, he could definitely be better, but I don't know. I don't know what's missing with him. Why does he constantly have to do this? He's like a more agile Bobby Lashley, you know? So I feel like if he come with that same type of energy, that same serious mentality as Bobby does, then he would stop getting hoed. But good luck to him uh, versus Braun Breaker. Uh, you guys can also catch that match at NXT Deadline. It will also be on Peacock. So it's a four ninety nine for the monthly subscription. You should get yours as well. It's going to last forever, but you should get yours as soon as possible so that way you can stay up to date and know everything that we're talking about. And lastly, NXT North American champion Wesley retained his championship against Carmelo Hayes. So shout out to Wes, man. I see the work. I see the growth. And uh, I love what he's doing over there on NXT. He deserves to have that championship. Who's the NXT superstar that you're looking forward to see on the main roster besides Carmelo? That's a good question, bro. But honestly, I feel like the main roster could use, and to be more exact, I feel like SmackDown could use a new tag team. So... I would like to see the Creed brothers be moved up, bro, because I feel like they're real needle movers in NXT. And I love the way they wrestle. I love their moveset. For y'all that don't know, they wrestle like Kurt Angle, but like twice as athletic. And they on point with all these slams, do twice as more slams. And they drop the straps and everything, too. They go crazy. So shout out Creed brothers. Uh, Again, y'all can check them out every Tuesday. They'd be on NXT turning up. So I would love to see them, bro. For sure, that was a gay one. 
Oh, I, I, honestly, I honestly agree with you about that because the tag team division is a little bit lackluster in WWE right now. It's still got Riddle trying to team with anybody to get a tag team shot. I don't like that, bro. Matt Riddle's trying to tag with anybody. See, that's why I know he's not going to be the world champion. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's painting his fucking fingernails, all type of weird-ass colors, throwing him off even more. I'm just like, bro, no one's going to take you seriously, and no one wants to put a belt on you. You're not Jeff Hardy, man. You're just a clown that talks about getting high or making high comments, doing dumbass shit, riding scooters around, got your toes out, all type of shit, bro, and they're painted. You just, bro, I'm just sick of seeing that, Matt. (laughs) Matt is never going to be WWE champion, man. And it's unfortunate because he was a dog on NXT. He had me as a watcher. He made me watch NXT. But for him to come into the main roster, only have a U.S. championship run. And his tag team run was kind of legendary in the sense of Randy Orton. But then, like, ever since then, it's, like, doing weird shit. Like, we doing weird shit that we don't approve of. And you see that you didn't approve of that because they got you by the wayside. Your entertainment act is a liar. Playing bongos and shit. I'm going to hit my bong. On the other side of the wrestling world, we're going to talk about AEW Rampage. Honestly, this show was uh, straight to the point. I think it just doubled down on the kind of things that we saw happen this past week on Dynamite. They just showed MJF hitting William Regal and the fact that he might be injured and we won't see him anymore. William Regal will not be in AEW anymore. Through many reports to find out that he's out of his contract now and he's headed back to WWE. So this is probably uh, them showing this is to double down on the fact that we're not going to see him and he's written off screen. Personally, I think uh, Rampage was also like maybe a 6 out of 10 because it didn't really have nothing too crazy going on. Uh, what did you think about what you saw? Uh, I would have to agree, bro. The show is pretty basic to me. Pretty regular. <sighs> The best match they had was Private Party versus Jeff Jarrett. Shout out to Jeff Jarrett for being 53 years old and still winning matches. Shit, still wrestling. Man, that boy, he about to check. I'm trying to tell y'all. For sure. He always, if he about a bag, like you say, he goes for luck. Oh, yeah. Lastly, they claim came out and addressed the crowd and let everybody know that they will be facing FDR. This coming dynamite. Honestly, I'm hoping that FDR wins. It, they claim I'm not a big fan of them. I don't feel like their run was that great. It just more seemed very gimmicky and a chance to hit a lot of merchandise. But I think FDR is a better tag team and overall deserve it. Uh, I'd have to agree, bro. I got a lot of respect for FTR, but I feel like AEW is gonna go towards trying to get that money and trying to sell merchandise. So they're going to be trying to sell scissors, scissoring guys to little kids as much as they can so that way they can get that paid. So I don't see FTR winning, and I even see them probably losing one of their belts or all of them to the acclaim, depending on how this match is set up. So good luck, FTR. Yeah, I, I definitely... I definitely understand that side of things too, bro, but I just don't want that to happen. I feel like I'm tired. I don't either, bro. That I'm it's shit. A, it's, a that's, like it's just not. That's AEW. It's not now. good for the tag team division. Now shit will make it stagnant. That's what WWE was on with New Day. They was like, hell yeah, niggas, y'all better go out there and throw that ass and throw these pancakes and shit and do, do that freaky shit. That's going to get everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> selling bootios and shit. Like, yeah, yeah, they about to be selling Cicero's <laughs> over there on AEW. So, yeah, they want that money, man. And unfortunately, that. that's the shit that, unfortunately, that's the shit that sells. So, damn shame. It is a damn shame. And it also takes away from real wrestling. And it also makes it hard for us to defend real wrestling or parts of wrestling that is real. You know what I mean? Like FTR, that's a real tag team. But just because of merchandising and sales and all the other bullshit, they about to most likely lose their match. That's just the way it is. That's it for Rampage. Now let's get into SmackDown. 
This past Friday night SmackDown was basically just a recap of what happened at War Games. I'd like to start off this segment by talking about the repackaging of Lacey Evans, bro. What did you think about this? Honestly, I thought the repackaging of Lacey Evans, I thought the repackaging of Lacey Evans was kind of asinine because this had not been the first time we've gone down this road with her. And like I don't understand what why they think taking her off the screen then putting her in these vignettes or a uh, little exclusive little boot camp promos is going to make us be hyped to see her again. But we just know if we don't react to her or anybody, it just don't, if it's not how they think it's going to be, they're going to nip it in the bud. And I don't know if it's just because, you know, Vintu is in charge, now Hunter's in charge, maybe it might be different, but I, I feel like, I feel like it's just going to be the same. She has a good moveset, a, a deep repertoire, and the ability to have a believable knockout. But it's just that it's something like a disconnection there, you know? It's kind of like carrying cross in a sense. What do you think? I actually, I enjoy Lacey Evans, and I don't understand why they've repackaged her four different times. It doesn't make sense to me. It's really unfortunate when you think about it because she has so much championship potential, you know? I can really see her being a women's champion. It's just unfortunate because we don't see her beating anyone that's of championship stature right now. For example, like Becky Lynch, Bianca, Ronda, hell, even Shayna Baszler. Like, we don't see that right now in her, but she has the potential to be in. She also just doesn't be given the opportunity. So I hope this repackaging leads to a championship. And if not, this also goes back into what I've been saying, that the WWE needs to make more belts for these women to compete for. So that way this character isn't being buried because there's nothing wrong with Lacey Evans. They don't need to keep repackaging her and bringing her back like she's someone new and doing all this extra shit. No, she's ready to be a WWE Women's Champion right now, to be honest. And if you guys aren't going to give that to her, then you guys need to focus on making more belts. Then you guys need to focus on making more belts to make the division more competitive because this is crazy. Like, the women's division on SmackDown is so boring. And usually, instead of giving them women's championship matches, you guys put them together as tag teams and then try to push them off on each other. And then they usually don't ever wrestle for the tag team championships. <laughs> They're just the tag team after that, so we just see them together on the screen. Green, like it? Shotzi and Raquel, for example. The, like, the most random pairing possible. Random. And now all of a sudden, they're best friends. Yeah, and they're not trying to get no belt. So what's the point of that, you know? You guys just need to make more belts for the women. Yeah, get them more involved. Moving right along to the next segment of SmackDown. We had Sammy Uso on the bloodline. Yes, and, sir. And we're going to discuss how what we took away from this segment. How do you feel about the demeanor between Sammy officially being accepted and everybody, including Solo? Man, honestly, I love this for Sammy. This is the best thing that could happen for Sammy, bro. But I don't like how they keep mentioning... There's no cracks in the bloodline. There's no cracks in the bloodline. Everything is cool. And Jimmy keep bringing it up and shit like, bro, shut that shit up. Like, okay, we get it. There ain't no cracks. Y'all ain't got to keep saying it. But that's basically telling y'all that there's cracks in the bloodline. And everybody's been noticing how Solo ain't been throwing up his one. And Sammy was acting real weird when Jimmy told Solo to go back him up when he's walking around. So... I don't know, like there's looking like there's some cracks in the bloodline. I don't I don't like where it's leading and I hope Sammy don't do nothing stupid or something that he's gonna regret. I'm hoping not either, bro, because I feel like this is the best thing that Sammy can do going forward because like you always say, get the title while you with the bloodline. Get that title while you it, can, bro. Because they help you keep it. Start a historic run. And I personally wanna see t- Sammy with the big championships, but right now I'd rather him just have Intercontinental, even a U.S., anything that he – just touching the ground, like win King of the Ring, like do something that's the real accolade that means something, Sam. You can't waste away your time 
And I, but I don't think you should turn on them at all. Don't listen to Kevin Owens because Kevin Owens don't give a fuck about you. And imagine that, bro. Sammy and Kevin Owens as a tag team. For why? For, I don't, For why? I don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need it. We like them as singles competitors. We enjoy them way more as that. In other news, my boy Ricochet won World Cup, as I predicted he would. Good shit, my boy. And now he's next in line to go against Walter, also known as Gunther. Um, bro, he just he needs to change that name. But anyway, he's going against him for the IC Championship. And uh, I can't wait to see that. And again, I'm going to put all the money on Ricochet. I think if anybody could do it, it's him, bro. What about you? What you think? I know he's the newest, biggest little man, but I think he definitely can um, possibly put up a good fight. I don't know what they might do, just seeing as how Gunther is on this ring where he's trying to like really impose his will. And right now he seems like he might be getting into the phase of, I'm a sneaky heel and not running shit now. So who knows? He might have Imperia come help him cheat or do anything. And Ricochet really is robbed and just looks like he might could really beat him. So maybe that could be the route they're going with this. But I want to say Gunther's not going to give it up to him just yet. Usually, like, when Walter fights his championship matches, he tells Imperium to stay in the back. So if it's a one-on-one fade, I got my money on Ricochet. If Imperium is ringside... Who knows? But let's calm it down on the distraction finishes and the and the um and the involvement of outside parties in the wrestling though. Like we've been trying to double down on that. Each podcast we're saying it so that way the, the algorithm can be broken. No more of that. What do you think about Solo not throwing up the ones, bro? Everybody's making a big deal of him not throwing that shit up. But I'm like, he's an enforcer. He's supposed to be tough. He's not about to be here panting to the crowd, throwing the shit up. He just be chilling. Like, you know, I'm thinking that's just his demeanor, but it's kind of looking like mm, I his demeanor tells me, all right, y'all cross the line. I'm, I'm going to show you what's up. You know what I mean? So, like, I could also see that, but at the same time, like, he's just chilling. What you think about it? I think he, I think that they're paying too much attention to it, honestly, bro. Like, at the same time, I get it because I've seen him throw up the one, but that's not always his thing. And he's doing yeah, I've fun. seen him throw it up before. That's why I'm like, you know, about to do that all the do, time. Wrestlers do shit like that all the time. I think it's wrestling fans just be over, try to over analyze and be like, uh, I do that. This is going to be the reason of, of the turn or the, or the downfall of the bloodline. And that's not always going to be that. Like I feel like Solo is like like you said an enforcer, mm. so he's trying to just and I feel like he's trying to double down that demeanor even more now that Sammy accepted because he was already cool with Sammy and never had to do too much. Yeah. So I never expected him to join that hug, and that makes his character even funnier because you know he's not gonna fucking join the hug. Yeah, he's not about to do that shit. So I don't know. They can't really assume that the bloodline has cracks simply because yeah. of that, but it could possibly be a sign. Yeah, you put that up. And I could also see Solo possibly being a plant by The Rock, like his daddy was back in the day. I don't think the elders really like Roman Reigns calling himself the head of the table because nobody really anointed him that but him. Like, And it was like kind of random when you think about it. But Solo may be the reason why Roman loses his belt. The bloodline may have more cracks than they think, but I just want to see someone get hit with the car like <laughs> Rikishi did Austin. Bro. <laughs> hey Rock, I did this for you. <laughs> I did it. I did it for the Rock. I did it for the Rock. What do you think about uh, Solo possibly being a plant in the bloodline? I think it's a plausible theory, but at the same time, I think they're overanalyzing it. So he, his character is cool enough to where it, he has that mysterious, uh, mysterious background. So he's like, really, what do we really know about Solo? So like he's the perfect person to be doing that. But at the same time, I feel like it's like, what could he really do? He's already like he's already close to Roman. Like, what's he gonna be able to do? Roman's not really telling anything. He just tell Roman's really telling him what to do. Like, go follow this person around. 
he was probably for Roman in a sense, but he could be a double agent, but I don't know. And do you see him beating Roman for a belt? Maybe at the end of this, a... at the end of this, basically, like, do you no. think that that's what that would lead up to? No, I feel like down the line, he could be a world champ, but it wouldn't be because he's beating Roman or beating Roman for anything. And if he goes beating Roman, it may be a mid card. Maybe that'd be kind of something sentimental. But Roman's trying to be the best of this generation, and he is in a sense. He's been able to do it. Jo- Dean and Seth had a chance to have the championship before him in this type of reign, and none of them could figure out how to get it to, to hold like this, yeah. to hold on the company, be that draw, and Roman's figured it out how to do it. No matter what people say, it's proven. So we have Paul Heyman on his back, so I feel like that's why he's at the table. You know, I know you said he, he anointed that him himself, but in a sense, Rock anointed himself the people's champ. He's one of my favorite wrestlers, but no one, he, he said the, the people anointed the Rock as the people's champ. You know, he said the he, he said I'm the people's champ once he started being a bad guy. He stopped becoming being a heel, and then he's like, now nah, I'm with the people. He's always the people's champ. <laughs> head of the table, acknowledge me. And, and if it's anybody that's really the head of the table, like I said, it's the Rock, bro. I said it the first episode. The Rock is the reason why Roman is able to run. So that just is what it is. So I don't know. They talking about The Rock coming back and winning Royal Rumble. So we might get Rock versus Roman sooner than we think. And Solo might be the reason why he give it up. Because he really here for The Rock, just like his daddy was. I did it for The Rock. <laughs> I just wanted to touch on this briefly. It looks like Raquel Rodriguez is going to be going against Ronda Rousey. At uh, this year's Royal Rumble and a one on one match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Not really looking forward to that match because I feel like it's going to be a better version of what we saw with Shotzi. Raquel's Rick- a little bit more polished. Or if Ronda already broke your elbow, why am I worried about you going yeah, for the title? Yeah, her arm is burnt the fuck out. So, But it'll probably be healed up by then, but I still wouldn't be trying to wrestle it's, Ronda fresh off an of injury. It's probably going to be wrapped up. It's going to be like a, a shark that's going to blood in the water. Yeah, <clears throat> it could go south, though, for Ronda because she might be overzealous and think that, oh, okay, she's injured, I'm about to just handle her, and she might fuck around and get finessed. Yeah. So hopefully Ronda can keep a level head and don't play with her, you know? Put her away early, Ronda. Mm-hmm. She'd, be, she'd be too in her head and be trying to pant to the crowd and shit like, oh, this is, your, this is who you thought was going to beat me? And no, just break her arm, Rhonda, and let's go on to the next match. She's Good crazy. Look. <laughs> yeah, she always trying to make an example out of somebody. <laughs> like, like, we know you can break these bitches off. We know, Rhonda. Let's just let's let's do it. Let's do it. Heat it up. <laughs> yeah, I would cook it with gas. Heat it up. Heat it up. Back for more, eh? you can't stop. Won't we'll stop that boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, we appreciate everybody for tag teaming with us while we wrestle with these good exotics, man. Everybody, make sure to go like, comment, and subscribe, share the shit with the world, continue to help us spread our dream. This has been another episode of WWX Wrestling with, with Exotics. exotics.